I'm zoomed in too much. Too much zooming of the zoomage in. We need to be right about there would be good, I think. I think that's good. Hey guys, welcome to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be prepping this thing and getting it ready for paint. Now, again, I'm not a fan of this method of building a tiny house. Now, to me, the foundation is one of the most important things of a livable structure. If you don't have a solid foundation, then your house will never be absolutely perfect. A lot of people do it this way, so I'm going to show you the best way to do it. So I did say in previous videos that I was going to weld stuff into this. I might have said that. I can't really remember. But thinking about that and trying to stay true to a budget-friendly build, uh, I realized that that's really not a budget-friendly way to go. So I need to make this thing work for a, a smaller budget. So what I've decided to do is build a deck on top of the trailer. Uh, this is going to cut down on my headroom inside my house, but I do have drop axles on this trailer, which gives me about, what is that? That's almost six inches. So if I build a deck on top of this, uh, I'm still gonna end up with a similar headroom that my regular house has. So what I'm gonna do, prep this thing, cut everything to length so that things work out. I'm gonna cut everything off that I don't need on the trailer, like this bracket that was on there. There's two brackets that need to get cut off. And then I'm gonna go get it sandblasted. And then in the following video, I will be spray painting it. I'll be doing a coat of primer, and then I'll be doing probably one or two coats of black Rust-Oleum paint. So let's do some math. You wanna do some math? You wanna to go to school again? Let's go to school. Everyone loves to go to school. Everyone hates school. I hated school. School sucked. It's time for some schooling. So in the US, the widest a vehicle or a trailer can be is eight foot six. You can go over eight foot six, but then you would need to get a permit to transport a wide load. Now, if you were gonna be driving from California to Connecticut, whatever, you would need to get a permit in each state and each one of them costs money. I'm not sure, it probably varies by every state. I don't think it's the hardest thing to obtain, but it's something that you need to be uh, concerned about. So whenever you're building a tiny house, you should really try to stay under that eight foot six. Unfortunately, I just measured my house and I am eight foot six and three quarters, which kind of pisses me off because I did a lot of math before, but one thing I didn't take into consideration was that drip cap that goes on top of my windows and that's an inch and a half. So that really threw stuff off. So I'm gonna be using that as a, a lesson to, to make this one exactly eight foot six. Well, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna shoot for eight foot five and a half because the unforeseen problems, just like my roof on my house ended up being exactly 13 foot six. Now, some people are gonna say that some states allow uh, 14 feet. Yes, they do, but in, if you're gonna be traveling from state to state, you need to stay under that 13 six. And a lot of tiny house people will tell you that even 13 foot six, even though it's road legal, you're still gonna hit branches. You're most likely not gonna hit wires or definitely not bridges unless it's well marked. So I, I think it's important to stay at that 13 foot six unless you are never gonna be leaving the state that allows 14 feet. I don't know what I'm drawing. I'm just gonna draw. Let's call that eight foot six. We're gonna minus a half inch once we're done. Okay, we're gonna go back to 18 five, five and a half. So, on each side, I'm gonna come in an inch and a half. Now that will be my drip cap for my windows. Now, you could have different situations for your house, but that piece of drip cap is a nice finish to the windows, and I'm most likely gonna have to do something like that on, on this project as well. So, I'm gonna go with that inch and a half, and then also, I'm gonna use half inch plywood on the inside of my, uh, underneath the Tyvek paper, I'm gonna use a half inch plywood. So that's two inches, and then that's framing. I can start doing my, my two by four wall right here, and if my trailer, finished trailer, comes to that, that'll be okay. Does that make sense? So when I do my, when I build my deck on top of my trailer, this, imagine this being a two by four or two by six, I haven't decided yet. That'll be the outside piece, and then I'll have one that runs into it and I'll do those every 16 inches on center. So all I really want right now is this length. So if I have this, which is two inches, eight foot six, I'm gonna minus two, and I need to double it because both sides, so four inches, 
and that is eight foot two. And that is gonna be to the outside of my frame. Now I'm gonna go another half inch peanut. Now I'm also gonna go another half inch peanut. Stop it. Whoa, you're crazy. Why are you yelling at me? Hello, I'm bullets. Uh, you got any food? You got any food? Hey, you got any food? Okay, no, no food, all right. So since I don't wanna be pushing that eight foot six limit, I'm just gonna minus a half inch, quarter inch on each side. No, should I go? I would rather be eight foot five than eight foot five and three quarters. If you ever get stopped by a state trooper or a DOT inspector, they are by the book on top of their shit, okay? So I'm scared now because of my trailer being a little bit over. Even though it's three quarters of an inch, if you find a trooper or a, an inspector, they'll call you on that shit and then you'll be stuck there until you can figure out how to get the permits. So why not make it just an inch shorter? Yes, that sucks because you're losing living space, but oh, that makes me angry a little bit. So I'm just gonna minus another inch to give me some errors. So eight foot one is going to be my width for my framing. So this cross beam right here, I'm gonna cut that down to size. What is it already? Oh, I don't need to. Oh, you know what, I just learned something. That's the first time I've measured that. Just changed everything about this video. That was an educational point right there. You just caught. These are small axles. Seven foot seven. You know what? You should know this, but axles come in different sizes, different lengths. These are obviously the smaller of the type that you can buy. Mine were the ones that brought you all the way to that eight foot six. So learning, learning thing happening right there. I don't need to cut anything off for these to be good. My joists are gonna be hanging over quite significantly, but I'm gonna be incorporating some steel construction into the, the joist to add some rigidity to it, to give it some strength, and to help connect it down to the trailer. So, no cutting, just grinding this stuff off. That just threw my brain for a freaking loop. So I'm gonna hook up the grinder and start grinding off the stuff that I don't need, and then we'll take it to the the uh, sandblaster and have them sandblast it and I'll maybe educate you a little bit on sandblasting I don't really know how to do it but it shouldn't be that much money I'm hoping it'll cost a hundred bucks to get it sandblasted which if I were to sit here with a grinder and a wire brush it would take me all day to grind this thing down so a hundred dollars versus 10 12 hours of work I think the hundred dollars is money well spent oh there it is there it is, we got it. So that's probably not gonna make it in the video. Guys, if you're enjoying this build, uh, please go check out my Patreon page. The link's gonna be in the description below. This project is fully fan funded through Patreon. It's gonna be going a lot slower than my regular house, but every penny that gets contributed to that page helps support this build. The benefits of joining Patreon, not only are you gonna be helping this build, you'll be getting uh, advanced access to all my content, Right now, I'm about a month, month and a half ahead of where my videos are actually at on YouTube, where you're watching this. And also, I do a lot of just for you videos. So, Patreon supporters are getting these behind the scenes vlog style videos that are just for them and they're kind of updating them about different things that I'm doing and explaining what's going on behind the scenes, stuff that, that you guys don't end up seeing because there's a lot of stuff that happens that doesn't make it into my videos. So, uh, and then also I've started a new series. Hopefully I haven't yet filmed one, but in my brain it's, it's started. So I'm probably gonna film one tonight, a, a vlog style video, which these videos will end up making on YouTube, but answering questions that I get a lot. I get a lot of repeat questions. So I wanna make some videos to help address some people's concerns that they might have with tiny houses. So. Those videos are available on Patreon, and right now I plan on doing about six of them. So if you're interested in that, please, please, please go check out my Patreon page. Again, links in the description. Thank you. Let's get back to work. I'm not really going to get back to work. I'm kidding. I, I have other shit I got to do. So since I've realized that I don't need to cut this thing to any length, basically, it's pretty much good. 
Um, all I really need to do is cut these three or four things off. Right here was a propane tank holder that I tried smashing off my hammer, did not work. So I'm gonna grind this off. This was a battery holder, this is coming off. And then these are um, things that holds a stabilizing thing, I think. I don't know what they are exactly. I'm gonna try to take them off in one piece. But this and this are just getting hacked off. I'm gonna use my handy dandy angle grinder, I think. Hopefully I don't hurt myself. I saw a picture the other day that scared the shit out of me. Because I don't want to be cutting into this five inch C channel. This has got, uh, this is going to be carrying a majority of the weight of my house. So I just want to be cutting above the weld and then I'll grind down to a, uh, to the, the C channel. Don't want to break that. That's, I break a lot of those. And you broke one. Good. I'm gonna get burnt, I guarantee it. That's the most rusted part of the whole trailer. So I dropped the trailer off at the sandblaster and I wasn't able to shoot any video of it because uh, he wasn't gonna get to it while I was still around. So uh, I went back 24 hours later and this is what I ended up with right here. This is absolutely perfect. Amazing. This, to get this quality with a grinder would have never happened and it would have taken at least 10 to 12 to 30, 40 hours, whatever. I don't know what it would have taken to hand grind it. So I'm pretty happy with that. And it only cost me $80 to have them blast it. So I think that was money well spent to spend the $80. If you just look online for a, a powder coater, any type of like large spray, uh, you know, body work type company, they're gonna have a sandblaster, um, probably, most likely. And that sandblaster was huge. It wasn't one of those little box ones, you know, that you do small things. Thing was massive. It was uh, big enough to hold this thing and you probably could something put something bigger in there. Now again, I'm not a fan of this method of building a tiny house on. This is very, very weak. Um, I'm still not sure how much those axles can support, but I'm gonna say they're about 3,500 pound axles each. 7,000 pounds is what I need to stay under. I don't think that's gonna happen. The way I'm building this house, I'll be able to modify that later if that needs to be uh, addressed. But I'll continue working my way forward on this project. But if you are new to my channel and you like this type of content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to leave your comments and great knowledge down below letting me know what you thought. Again, I'm not a fan of this, so you don't need to tell me you're not either because it's not, not the best way of building a tiny house. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and I will see you on the next video. They did like a really good job though. This was the only part that I noticed that they kind of missed, but it's not bad. It, it's paintable. That was the only part like that thing right there. I don't know what happened here. I woke up this morning and I was ugly. I mean, you can't be pretty every day. Some days you gotta be ugly. Not me, I'm always freaking gorgeous. All the bitches want me. Peanut, you are a bitch. Fuck you, don't call me that. <laughs>